Oh, well, we're good to go. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay, hey guys, welcome to the Tech Africa podcast. My name is Emmanuel. And what I have in my mind this week, or so far so good, is something called the scandal of selectivity. So where journalists practice what we call selective reporting. So when something happens, we pick and choose those good and little pieces that we are interested in. And it, I think it's a scandal every journalist commits, but how how uh, impactful that scandal is is going to be an issue. For instance, we're going to talk about Elon Musk's Twitter becoming x basically disappearing. But as an African journalist, I'm already searching, okay, how does this relate to the African context? How does it relate to what I want to do? But, and I think this also goes the other way around, right? The audience, the businesses that are reading tech points and listening to our podcast will be like, oh, why do you need to talk about this? Talk about this, this good side, this good side. Don't talk about the bad sides. Uh, when you want to talk about the bad side, do it very tastefully. Arrange the word. Put not just put naked in domain side. Just add uh, <laughs> the all the spices and ingredients. So yeah, Twitter is no longer existing. But the question I want to ask and uh, my fellow uh, host here today, Nifemi and Bobby, thank you very much for coming to the podcast this morning. Hi, it's, it's good yeah, to be here. So, I think the biggest issue for me as an African is the fact that okay. Never have I been more conscious of the fact that as an African, I'm a second class citizen on the internet with Elon Musk's Twitter. This is why I'm saying so. Is this a new realization? Or no. We are it's, coming it's, to accept it. It's in my face every day. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, there are some days where you want to, like, what you notice is, okay, you want to watch a football highlight and you can't watch it because it's, it's not available. available the education. Education. Or you want to watch anime. You want to actually pay for it, not even pirate. If I want to pirate, I can go to all those sites that will destroy your life with ads. But if I want to watch anime, I can't. I want to watch Family Guy. I basically can't. Okay, of course, they are licensing and blah, 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 blah. But even some movies that are just premiered, that, that are just premiered on Netflix might not be available for you. You're licensing you issues. Use VPN. Yeah, licensing issues, right? They can't, they are not, they cannot deliver. But on a social media platform where, oh, payments platform to PayPal, you want to use PayPal, you can't receive money. All those are the things that come once in a while. But for Twitter, first of all, I don't know if Twitter Blue is available in Nigeria yet. Can you pay for Twitter Blue in Nigeria? Yes, I the keep Nigeria seeing- The card, debit card or what? No, I keep no. seeing the Twitter. I, Let me just I can't, I can't. You've tried paying and it didn't said work. coming soon. Oh, we are working. the icon is just there, but yes, you don't have it yet. Obviously. don't have it yet. And, Elon Musk is clearly saying we are going to be play for favoritism to those who are using Twitter Blue. Now, yeah. there's also the company side of things. I'm seeing some Nigerian companies paying for the Twitter subscription yeah, to verify York, organization. Yeah, New York, um, what's it called? Delaware. Finish your sentence now. <laughs> <laughs> they are probably not incorporated. They are probably dual incorporated. Incorporated in Africa and incorporated in the US. That's why they uh, able to get it. It doesn't even matter, Seth. As long as you have the money, you will be able to do it. Like if I log on to Twitter with a VPN right now, I'll be able to subscribe to Twitter Blue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess wherever you are, as long as you have the money, you can subscribe. Mm-hmm. One eight thousand dollars a month and, and for, ex- a company. for a company for a and company, yeah. you have to pay extra. So those are I don't care what Elon Musk calls the company, but the fact that I think a lot of things are messed up and even with the mess, you can't even participate in the mess as an African. <laughs> okay. I don't know. You said this more in our face. I think it has been in our face for a long time. Take for instance, the big tech companies. Mm. The reason they have interest in Africa is because they believe that, that maybe in another decade or two decades or five decades, Africa will be the next big market. They're probably not getting any ad revenue or considerable ad revenue from from africa that's another point but then they are bringing google which it was recently that google launched, launched a piano, yes a piano. Equano sub sub cable mm-hmm. in lagos yeah um you will often see initiatives from google from facebook or meta 
in Africa, not because they feel that there's the market or they rate us that much. <laughs> they just believe that this market is so untapped that if we invest in this market, yeah, mm -hmm. in the future, when it becomes the fully fruits. exposed, we, we eat the fruit. So yeah. I don't think we should, I don't think there's a big deal about it. So don't feel bad. Okay. So I'm not saying your pain is not valid. So to but watch I ordinary football highlights from Chelsea match, I, I can't you. watch because I feel you. I understand licensing. I don't I get that. Honestly. I understand what you're going through. That's the way I don't get why FIFA gets to get all the real names of players and pests. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So uh, just to clarify, last week we talked about South African uh taxi wi-fi and we looked at that news with the perspective of nigerians which again we're committing the scandal of selective reporting okay yeah. we're approaching stories based on oh. our own perceived distance so south africa taxi is what buses downfall are in nigeria so in lagos, in lagos. So public buses Okay, thank you, Nifemi. <laughs> so yeah, what public buses are in Nigeria and most of that. So I'm going to blame South Africa. Like why call buses taxis? I'm going to blame them. But of course, so, you know, Tim was doing the thing that's collecting one now. You want to, you want to <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, that's what Hollywood has taught us here. Yeah. No, taxi. Even when you're doing if okay, so 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 I I mean I, I mean, saw yeah. I saw this video from this lecturer that was talking about uh, relativity in African languages, right? Mm -hmm. They're teaching you A for apple. Apple right. is not something that is readily grown in Nigeria. A for Agbado. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that is the point. But why call taxis? Why call buses, buses taxis? taxis? It's something, but every, all the questions I was asking that day starts to make sense, right? Because I felt like having public Wi-Fi in a taxi, which is car, uh, it's not understood. like mass transit. Yeah, it, it, can it didn't really make sense. It maximum of few people yeah but with a bus it makes more sense so yeah thanks for bearing with us and someone corrected us in the comments and shout out to him and of course yeah i'm waiting for the next episode that you will be here because we got confirmation that it looks sounds like an ai like an ai <laughs> <laughs> it needs a, a, okay. a, a level of emotions like. all right all right so let's move to another story that some people in the ecosystem feel we shouldn't have done which mm. is flutter wave. I mean, we, we got questions about, okay, what, what is the value in uh, writing that kind of story? But mm. the value is clear, right? The audience that we are speaking to, the people generally, a lot of people had their accounts frozen. If yes. nothing happened, why freeze Nobody accounts frozen, yeah. if nothing happened, right? Mm. So we're hearing there's another. Yeah, could be there could be another. There could two, have been three more. Seven. Two, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, um, just to do a quick recap, um, on March five, we reported um, a possible flutter wave breach, right, um, of around two point nine billion naira. So, what happened then was um, we got access to some court documents that showed flutter wave trying to get, you know, a court order to get some accounts frozen those accounts were beneficiaries of the 2.9 billion era, which in the doc court documents they claim um, was illegally transferred from Flutterwave accounts, right? So, um, you know, following up with the story after that, we spoke to some of the people, the owners of those accounts that were frozen, and you know, they confirmed that, they told us rather that it was possible that more breaches might have happened at um, Flutter Wave. And then when we dug in deeper, we saw that um, a, some people received, um, someone received uh, 200 million Naira sent from Flutter Wave. Another person received 250 million Naira also sent from Flutter Wave. That and is not their money. Yes, they did business, right? They are crypto traders. They sold USDT, got Naira. So after that transaction, the accounts were frozen. Accounts of people they sent money to were also frozen, right? So, I mean, when you think about it, if I get money from someone, right, 
it's not over the limit. It's not over my account limit. It's just say I get fifty thousand naira from from Imano, for example, and my account gets frozen. That means there's something wrong on Imano's end, mm-hmm. and then from that last breach we reported, bank sent emails to those people saying. Flutterwave asked us to freeze your account because the origin of the money you got it's not you know, just put it locally it's not pure mm. <laughs> right it's sketchy <laughs> exactly yes. so they sent emails this time around we also i saw screenshots people sent me screenshots about the, of their banks telling them um there's something wrong with the source of your money but uh funny enough um the beneficiary of the 200 million naira um his bank because his accounts got frozen a few days after the transactions normally you know, i spoke to uh one of our in-house lawyers here and you know she said normally to get a court order to get an account frozen it's really not that quick if the lawyer is really fast works fast it should take almost a week right but his account was frozen like two days after his bank didn't even tell him why it was frozen but then another source sent me some screenshots of um um nibs nibs telling a particular bank um i can't remember the name of the bank now uh it's a microfinance bank nibs told um the bank that okay this account owner restricts all like further transactions with this account flutter wave said re- restricts it Right, thought I was boldly, boldly written in the screenshot of the email, and yes, so I mean it's it's obvious, right, that something is definitely wrong. Well, this well, money well. is moving from Flutterwave to other accounts, and Flutterwave is saying this money that is coming from us, something wrong with it. Hold that person, <laughs> please hold that person. So, hold that so so is investigations going? So Even just free yes, because yeah, um, the sources, those sources also told me that you know, thought that we got reported to the police right in Yaba, uh, Panti Yaba to be rec- to be precise, and I think those they are the ones doing the investigation, but then some of these um beneficiaries of this all these monies I've been calling, they are saying okay, I did my business, I don't know because. And there's there's this theme, recurring theme in about this thing is that they all sold USDT to a Chinese customer. They all have Chinese customers. The first person uh, in the first um from the first uh, breach we talked about sold to a Chinese customer. He received uh, one point six billion naira, right? I think he, to- he sold around uh, I'm not precisely sure now, two or three million dollars worth of um USDT, right? And the other two also sold <laughs> to a Chinese. I actually spoke to one of the beneficiaries of the beneficiary of the beneficiary of the two hundred million naira, and he told me I only sold the city to a Chinese customer. I have known this customer for a while. I've been working with him, yeah, that, that and is- the customer has been sending from Flutterwave. So what is so it raises even more question that okay, yes, th- this looks like a breach. But then if this person has been using Flutterwave for a long time, is that this person has been breaching Flutterwave for this long? These guys are telling me this cost they, this customer has been giving sending them money. They've been doing business for some um okay. One person said the person that introduced them to that Chinese customer has been doing business with that Chinese customer for close to four years. Because when peer to peer was still the main thing in exactly. um, crypto so trading. Is it that it's mostly Chinese people that you interact yeah. with? And then it's also important to you know talk about Flutterwave side of the story. I reached out to them and they said there's no breach. We only noticed some that some account owners have not enabled some um, security settings. We are under it. We've sorted everything, and and then there was another f- comment which showed which seems like Flutterwave knows something is happening, but they don't want to talk. So they told me that. Um, there was a report by Tech about that said that one of the beneficiaries said um, it is possible that Flutterwave could be considering forfeiting the monies lost, right? And then Flutterwave told me uh, about forfeiture, right? 
it was i mean out of, i didn't ask that it was out of, it told me that about the forfeiture of um water wave yes okay. of, about the forfeiture of whatever monies that they can't say anything about that at the moment you didn't that, ask them about forfeiture. i did not i did not and then they said they can't talk about that at the moment but they are in talks with like I okay. think some number security operatives Probably. trying to get whoever is behind whatever. Not this talk was not straight. <laughs> yeah, so things are in my mind right yeah. now. But this, let me address the for future that they yeah. mentioned that you didn't ask them. They probably copy and pasted the response that they gave someone else. They just assumed that you have the same set of questions. They didn't want to even. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Exactly. I can't confirm that, but now I want to try and give them a benefit of doubt. If it was not the bridge. Okay. What happened? What that's, are the other that's possibilities? Mm. Because what is, what they are saying is that denying it's a breach, but not they are not telling us exactly what happened. Exactly. So what could have happened? Now there's something Okoyemi uh, Awoyemi wrote in one of his previous newsletters. I I just stumbled on it, mm. talking about how about the whole infiltration of. Um, um fintech uh, fintech companies something okay. he calls race condition hmm. say the favorite gig of scammer struggling fintechs so that's a vulnerability that most fintechs are facing and i don't know if that's an issue is could this be something we explore maybe i, I mean it's it's very very weird right mm. flutterwave is not did not come to this game yesterday mm. mm-hmm. right We've said the media has said hack. We've said breach, but I'm probably thinking, could there be something else responsible? And Okoyemi Awoyemi's newsletter, I was forwarded to you, mentioned something about race conditions. So, when many many uh, how, how did they even explain itself? When multiple transactions are initiated simultaneously, mm. leading to delays in processing and a window of opportunity for scammers to exploit. Interesting. So it's like you overload the system. Okay. And it, that with that overload, window. there's a delay in transactions and there's not so a window for scammers to mm. exploit the system. Mm. Something called that risk condition. Risk condition. So I think this is going to be a valid uh, something we should look into. That we should look into and say, okay, what could be happening with Flutterwave? Who else could it be happening to that no one is talking, talking about? about? Because Every year we hear banks getting defrauded. We hear fintechs getting uh, losing money to fraud, mm-hmm. but we don't know who is doing it, how they are doing it, and we keep having this surface level narrative. So I think it's time for us to dig deep into this yeah. issue. Yeah. What really happened at Flutterwave if it wasn't a breach? Because the breach is the easiest narrative. Exactly. Exactly. So the it's. it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that's a very interesting way to look at it because something something is definitely um something definitely wrong and i'm also leaning to the fact that it might not might not be as simple as you know what we think it is it might not just be somebody who went in to steal money yeah it might be something even it might be something beyond i'm i'm thinking something even beyond africa is even beyond the nigeria <laughs> With chinese connection i'm telling okay. you okay and it's not my because yet. that's a recurring theme right <laughs> okay you didn't hear it from here. <laughs> but yeah, if I mean if you are following the tech space, I think you should follow uh Apoyemi Awodiemi is the founder of Jobberman, Art School, and some other startups who go host uh, Technology Museums is the name of the newsletter. It's, n- it's not sponsored by them, but I think it's, it's a useful resource. Of course, alongside FinTech Today, Tech Point Digest, and Workaholic. Those are very, very useful resources. Uh, and yeah, you know, ov- obviously you'll be hearing more of such uh, things. And let's come back to each one of Africa's public companies that has been facing issues. Before the podcast, you said they were the one that launched the door <laughs> Le- for yeah. layoffs in Africa. Yeah, like Ellen, as far back as May, May, May last 2022. year, 2022. Before then, even big techs, I yeah. didn't know. Well, we're not yes. talking about what's the name of the company? Swivel. Swivel. Oh, yes. yeah, yes. Spelled S W V L. Okay. Yes. So, but I don't want us to spend too much time on it. But what mm-hmm. is the issue that is facing them right now? It's facing them, or they are facing the issue. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what issue are they facing? <laughs> so, um, if you remember that they were um, listed on Las- Nasdaq last year, um, April, yeah. 
April. So since then, we've, there, there have been um, announcements that the valuation keeps decreasing. And it has gotten to a point where Nasdaq is like, they are giving you 180 days is six. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry. My mass is <laughs> the is not massive. You want you know. someone from Sufu to start attacking you? No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. We, we laugh six a lot months. on this I'm podcast. So, sorry. Though, so. so they've been giving six months, mm-hmm. like six months. Get your house in order. Make sure you are able to raise your valuation to match what a publicly um, um, held company should should actually be worth mm-hmm. right and that is they're telling them to raise it above 15 million dollars if not i think they will be delisted, delisted from nasdaq and it sounds sad because uh, for you to get into a um, reputable capital market in the u.s like like nasdaq as an african um african founded company startup rather it, it's, it's quite sad. And um, then I went to to see how Swivio actually got into, got IPO'd last year. And I, um, I, I recall that they the IPO'd as a Spark company. And mm. Spark is like um, uh, a special purpose. special purpose acquisition company. company yes so they get ipo'd in in an unconventional way like the, they don't they don't like do check their valuation like you traditionally you don't do all the paperwork yes paperwork. because well you do it by acquiring a lot of companies under you and you enter the market so i think that is so I, I'm guessing maybe Swivu didn't actually reveal how much they were worth as of the time they IPO'd, and it's 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 sad because if 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 this happens, if we don't know how bad it can get, right? Because it was just one month after the IPO'd, they laid off 400 employees, right? It wow. was it sounded strange then that Oops. wow. That, that's a lot just one month after that so that means they've been shaky even before, before now the that the economic recession is even re- is recessioning <laughs> you get and if if that is just the threat you are looking for that that is not even the only thing that is happening they are even having personnel issues of people on their board of directors stepping down for instance now um the two board members have stepped down they re- not even stepped down. they resigned right and the guy that, uh, yusuf yusuf oh. salem that has been like the public facing person for sweden mm. at the moment is still is still there no no mm-hmm. he has also resigned oh. interestingly he has also resigned because he has been the one doing all the public facing he has also resigned and f- for now um the guy the, um, the guy that is the CFO for Middle East, who is Abdullah Amaso, will now be in charge for this period. So for people that are even at the top to be resigning, I mean, there's there a lot of conflicts yeah, happening within the company. So there, there are talks that maybe they will be acquired. Just imagine an acquirer getting acquired. <laughs> it reminds me of Sparksful. Sparksful. Yeah. So you feel this might go the way of Sparksful? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I just feel there's a lot of inside... Inside fights Wala, and all yeah. of that. Okay. If if it's an inside fight, then it's probably going to get worse. If it's not an inside fight... And it's, it's just economic. An economic situation. issue. Probably they will pivot to something else and do something else. But do you think they'll get delisted too? It's possible. It's possible. If, and if the evaluation drops they, beyond, they might I have think they to will. like withdraw operations from many of the many markets that they are in. They expanded to Europe through acquisition, Middle East through acquisition. Where else did they go? They were they were a lot of places. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm hoping that okay, Argentina, Chile, uh, where else? Is it Chile? Turkey. Yes. 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 Chile. 
Okay. Yes, the, the there is Turkey. Okay, before they come and drive. <laughs> yes, and so the, the defense went to many markets through acquisition. So maybe a good place to start is to, to do operations down. from those ones. Focus on Africa and let's see where they go from there. Actually, Swivel came out of nowhere and was in our faces, if you remember. Yeah. Nobody saw it come. They just, and we're raising our stuff. We are there today. I think they are still. <laughs> I, I won't say they came out of nowhere. They're probably just not in face of the media. Face of your True. Probably doing things currently. I mean, if you you could say the thing for money points, you were on that area for a yeah, very long true, time. True, true, true. So yeah, so yeah, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm getting depressed with the whole sordid stories and yeah, gracious. There was no good news this week. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you can see the selective uh, reporting in action. <laughs> okay. The scandal with reporting based on mood. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I, I mean, there were some good things that happened this week. At the very least, Kenya is launching its own satellite. Nice. Beyond the whole risk conditions, beyond the whole public markets, uh, brouhaha. That silver line is a very, very important one. But it's making me look at okay what africa's place in the whole space and exploration i mean when there was space was in communist era us Russia, china nobody even do we okay let me not even say anything <laughs> oh yeah we we are bringing someone from behind the scenes she has a lot of backstory about nigeria's and africa's space efforts to look at kenya's uh, satellite launch so Onome, thank you for taking time out from yeah, it's good to it's good to it's see good you, to drag on, you on the camera. <laughs> good to be dragged. Yeah. You okay. didn't come here on Women's Day, uh, International Women's Day. You didn't come here whatever other days. Must but you show you me in the outside? Like, yes, yes. You it's a must. Yes. yes, yes. That's what we are here for. It's beyond people. It's young people that will do things like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You see, yeah. now your people they do person. Yeah, yeah, but what's what's happening with Kenya? In yeah, just give us a lowdown and. So yeah, basically Kenya is launching its first satellite. It has never launched a satellite before. So it's launching it. Really? Yes, never. Really? <laughs> I mean, Nigeria, even with all the Wala, has at least one or two. <laughs> Some are redundant, but let's not go there. Oh, okay. we'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically this. Kenya has launched, launched its first satellite. Um, satellite is called Taifa One. It okay. means one nation or one Kenya in Swahili. Okay. And um, so an Earth Ob- the, it's an Earth Ob- observation satellite. Basically, it's a satellite that's supposed to observe it and send back information ba- um, to wherever it is supposed to transmit the information. It's supposed to help them with um, getting information on their land. Currently, they're suffering a drought, so it will help them with all of that. It will help them with um, mapping out things. Like There's a lot of things that it's going to, it's going to help in agriculture. It's going to help in... Uh, let's see, so that I know that I'm not seeing rubbish. Mm-hmm. It's going to help them in agriculture, environmental issues, and all of that. The climate change. Climate and change and all of okay. that. Dope, dope, dope. Cool. That's basically what's so, but I'm actually surprised that this is the first time they are launching an Earth observation. Is this, is this like a recurring trend for African countries? So, currently, African countries only have, I think, 50, 50 satellites. How many countries are in Africa? 54. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's so <laughs> that is the thing. It's that, not all African countries. Oh, okay. So at least 13, 13 African countries have 48 satellites. That's what's oh. mm-hmm. that is what. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, like th- only 13 have 48. So that's only 13 have 48. So yes. I'm guessing at least half of African countries don't have satellites. Yes. That. At the very least, half. So, but even those that have, how functional? So, are they? a lot of them are. Nigeria has a case study. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nigeria, Nigeria's, Nigeria has one functional one. Okay. But according to the DG of NASDA, he says it's functioning by grace. So, it's functioning by grace. Those were his words. It's not by mind. That is his words. It's those are his mind. words. There's no, it's, <laughs> it was one that said it's not me that said it. It's not, it will not come from me. It's one Glory that said God. No, no. You yeah. say horses are drawn for battle. <laughs> <but victory. laughs> so, yeah, it's it's functioning by grace. That is what he said. Wow. So, like, even the functioning one is yes. functioning by so grace. It was supposed to expire like a few years ago. But only God knows that it is still alive. <laughs> wow, 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 yeah. wow. That's that's really, really crazy. So no silver lining. 
So this so for 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 them for Kenya is a good thing because like I said they are facing a drought so mm. it's something that will be helpful for them to solve all of all those problems and all of that. But there's another interesting thing that um that I want to mention is that there's no African satellites. All those 48, all those 50 satellites, none of them have been launched on African soil. Okay. Yes. So they were launched Just from rockets in Europe. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. And the funny thing is that Africa has had eight rockets launch sites before. It gets more interesting. None of them are made by the African countries themselves. <laughs> So, <laughs> so maybe we're not like, just noticing. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so like oh, none of them, not a single one. We had in Egypt, we had Kenya even had one. That one was found by an Italian um, person. It's I think it packed okay. up packed up in I think, I think I think we need to do like like a quick a quick article uh, like quick facts on space. Maybe, maybe say space exploration in Africa or yeah. maybe that's something we did with who has what, how many words. Just something, something quick. Okay, yeah. who will do it? I'll who? do it. Uh, I'll <laughs> do the others. I've gotten the one from last week. But Chandra. Lagos oh. oh yes. Um, no, it's not forgotten. It's actually Someone still. Someone actually responded. Be... Who? Yeah. On the YouTube. On YouTube. Oh. Yeah. What is it? On YouTube. They said um, I can't remember, but it gave a, an estimate of seventy five million to something like that. Interesting. Ah, I have to check that out. I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, cool, 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 cool. All right. So that's that's thanks for that. I thought it was good news, but it depressed me even more. <laughs> Thank you, but no time. I mean, it's, it's still good news for Kenya. Good we news. We, all, we should only hope that Kenya doesn't end up like you know yeah. the others. No, it, what, what you guys are saying right now is like saying, "Oh, Nigeria finally has a car." There's no movie. No, the car. Like we just got our first car. Like oh, when Formula okay. Eurasian oh, got okay. car, <laughs> first woman got a car, whatever. Sorry, my history memories mm. a bit foggy, but. For me, that's how it feels, right? Are, are we actually building these cars from scratch in Nigeria? Mm, mm. Are we, I mean, beyond assembly, the ones that are trying to build these cars from scratch, how much support are we even offering them? Yeah. Let me give you a silver lining. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> so, this satellite was, was designed by Kenyan engineers. Ah, <laughs> it was designed Finally. by the Kenyan engineers. Kenyan engineers, like yes. Kenyan, yes, black Kenyan, Kenyan engineers. Black Kenyan engineers. Right. Yes, Iman, that, uh, that's on Silver Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, just, no, so no, just no, 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 I don't want to be one. okay. Okay. Just that. Uh, just like they were not the one that manufactured it, but at least it was designed. It was designed Wait, when you say design, do you mean wireframe and Figma? No, no, no. no, no I mean no, in engineering, no, no. it's 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 like more AutoCAD. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm sorry. I'm not an engineer, but no. okay. Let's even say it's like wireframes and like. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to slice them or anything. I want okay. to make sure that they actually got the concept because let's take Apple for instance. Most of their phones are not manufactured by Apple. They yeah. do the R and D. They do the designs for the phone and outsource it to a manufacturing yeah. company. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah, happened? basically okay. that's what happened. Makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm very happy about that. <laughs> but yeah, they came up with the concept for the satellite, mm. even though it wasn't manufactured in Africa. Mm. That's fine. If we can, if, I think if Africa can invest in R&D, we don't, probably don't really need to be manufacturing these things ourselves. But of course, where we Yes, Apple exactly. From? I mean, we don't, I mean, just look at the Apple example. They are not doing it, but it's still brilliant. They do, they do. They do the research. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Or not. I mean, the most important thing is they are cheap. They don't make it no, themselves. Yeah. yeah. But nah. it's still one of the best on the market. So, yeah. Thank you for the civil and I'm really, really happy about that. <laughs> and I want to be seeing more of that, right? Across not just uh, satellites, uh, rockets, cars. I mean, check out our future of Kiftab. They build defense equipment for uh, governments and security agencies across the globe. That's yeah. a really, really crazy company. A Nigerian company. Yeah. Nigerian company, they are the one coming up with the concept. Again, it's not really designed in Nigeria, but they are the ones that come up with the designs and the concepts for the products. And there are lots and lots of, there's a lot of gap in the talent market for mm -hmm. people like this. And trust me, you remember this podcast episode. I wanted to inspire you to do really, really awesome stuff. Yeah. And yeah, you don't even need to remember me. Just remember Tech Point and You'll be fine. So don't forget our newsletters, Tech Point Digest, FinTech Today, Workaholic, and the Lagos Startup Expo. If you're solving a problem 
for the Nigerian market, for the West African market, you should be at the Lagos Startup Expo because people looking for the solutions to that problem will be coming. I don't need to say more. Go to LagosStartupExpo.com <laughs> and watch out for all our marketing videos that are coming. Right? Thank you. So, <laughs> see you guys in the next one. Um, yeah. Bells and whistles. Share, like, subscribe, and yeah, you know what to do. Uh, audio guys. Yeah, you can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Hi Art Radio, and anywhere else you get your podcast. Every time we do this, I'm just like, God, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like you like it, right? See, let's, let's leave. Let's leave. Let's leave. <laughs> All right, bye-bye, people. <laughs> bye.